order for Holy Communion begins on page 67 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord our Lord Jesus Christ saith, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Almighty Lord and everlasting God, vouchsafe we beseech thee to direct, sanctify, and govern both our hearts and bodies in the ways of thy laws and in the works of thy commandments, that through thy most mighty protection, both here and ever, we may be preserved in body and soul through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The proper is appointed for Quinquagesima, begin on page 122 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. And with us. Let us pray. <clears throat> O Lord, who has taught us that all our doings without charity are nothing worth, send thy Holy Ghost and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of charity, the very bond of peace and of all virtues, without which whosoever liveth is counted dead before thee. Grant this for thine only Son, Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Please be seated. The epistle is written in the 13th chapter of the first epistle of Paul the Apostle to the Corinthians beginning at the first verse. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and I have not charity, I am become a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mystery and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And I, though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, it profiteth me not, nothing. Charity suffereth long, and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself. It is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemingly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, Rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass, darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as I am known. For now abideth faith, hope, and charity, these three. But the greatest of these is charity. Here in the epistle.
The Holy Gospel is written in the 18th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke, beginning with the 31st verse. Then Jesus took unto him uh, the twelve, and said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and all things that are written by the prophets concerning the Son of Man shall be accomplished. For he shall be delivered unto the Gentiles, and shall be mocked, and spitefully entreated, and spitted on. And they shall scourge him, and put him to death, and the third day he shall rise again. And they understood none of these things, and the saying was hid from them, neither knew they the things which were spoken. And it came to pass that as he was come nigh unto Jericho, a certain blind man sat by the wayside begging, and hearing the multitude pass by, he asked what it meant. And they told him that Jesus of Nazareth passeth by. And he cried, saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And they which went before rebuked him, that he should hold his peace. But he cried so much the more, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood and commanded him to be brought unto him. And when he was come near, he asked him, saying, What wilt thou that I shall do unto thee? And he said, Lord, that I might, may receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Receive thy sight, thy faith hath saved thee. And immediately he received his sight and followed him, glorifying God. And all the people, when they saw it, gave praise unto God. The Gospel of our Lord. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by If you're able, please remain standing. At this time, I would like to invite all of our altar servers down, our acolytes, torchbearers, crucifers, uh, vergers, and also our thurifers to come down for a blessing. I would also like to acknowledge Deacon Chip leads this group for us. I'm grateful for all of their ministries. They come.
remaining standing, let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who givest grace to those who minister, bestow thy blessing, we pray thee, upon thy servants appointed to serve those who stand before thine altar. Give them such seriousness of life that the services in which they engage may be to their profit and spiritual good. Through their association with holy places and things, may they grow in the Christian life, and by their service in the house where thou dost manifest thine honor and glory, may they be prepared for that house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, if you could, please turn so the congregation can acknowledge your service. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you all. Well, good morning and welcome. Good to see all of you here on this rainy morning. Not supposed to complain about rain in Texas, I hear. So we won't complain, but uh, it's a little bit dreary out there this morning. So I'm glad to see all of you here. Uh, we do especially welcome those who are visiting with us. We have a Cranmer House going on, Cranmer House class going on this weekend. So we have several students around you'll see. So we're glad they're here. Other visitors, we're glad you're here today. We hope you'll either sign the guest register located in the back in the narthex, or if you prefer, there's a visitor card in the pew back in front of you. You can fill that out, put it in the offering plate as it comes around a little later. We'd like to send you a note thanking you for being here. Also, uh, as you go through the double doors on the right, there is a low table that has some visitor packets. Feel free to take one of those with you. It'll tell you a little bit more about our church. Uh, right after the service, we do invite you to come over next door for refreshments. We have good coffee and donuts over there, so I hope you'll come over uh, for a little time of fellowship. And then, of course, we have Sunday school for all ages. We have our new members class going on uh, across the way over in the Edmond building. Uh, for adults. And then coming up next Sunday, we do begin our youth confirmation classes. So if you have a, a youth who is uh, time for confirmation, please make sure that you talk to Father Michael about that. Well, we've got a busy week going on. Uh, Shrove Tuesday is coming up on uh, this week, and we'll have our uh, pancake dinner. This is put on by the youth, pancake supper, uh, clergy race, so that's uh, our entertainment for the evening. So we invite all of you to come out. You don't have to sign up for it. Just come on Tuesday evening. Details in the bulletin. Ash Wednesday, of course, uh, this week. Uh, we have a noon service and then a 6.30 service. to be Holy Communion with the imposition of ashes. We will also have morning prayer that morning as well. Thursday night, we have a consecration service. Uh, Ken and John Bunzire from our sister church, Chapel of the Cross, is going to be Consecrated as a bishop, Lord willing, uh, Archbishop Beach, many other bishops will be here. Bishop uh, Finnick from the Free Church of England will be our preacher. Uh, it'll be a wonderful service. I mean, what a blessing. Uh, many of us go through a lifetime without seeing the consecration of a bishop. We're going to have two here over the next two months in our church. So it's really a great blessing. I hope you'll plan on coming if you're able. Uh, next week, we do begin our Lenten series, and remember on the Wednesday evenings during Lent, uh, we don't have our Evensong and other activities. We gather here at 5.30 for Stations of the Cross, then we go over for soup at 6 o'clock, and then we have a talk at 6.30. Uh, there is a sign-up sheet next door, so if you're able to sign up to bring soup or bread or something uh, to go with that, um, those meals, that would be wonderful. Uh, there is a note also in your bulletin concerning Lenten offerings. As you know, we have three offerings during Lent. I would highlight just one today. The little plastic churches, as you go out the double doors on the table there, uh, everything that we raise through that uh, Lenten offering in those churches that you bring back at the end of Lent will go to the Fielder family. They're mi medical missionaries from our parish over in Kenya. So everything, just take one of those little plastic churches, put your spare change, whatever in there, and then bring those back at the end of Lent. All that we gather up will go to support those medical missionaries. And I'll be talking about the other offerings in the weeks to come. Well, other announcements, as you know, there's always a lot going on. Uh, so please make sure that you check your bulletin, especially take note of the women of the church are invited to the Lenten Bible study that's going on beginning uh, next Sunday. So take note of that on the back of the bulletin. Are there any birthdays or anniversaries that we can pray for this week? All right, let's turn to page 597. 597. Right 
praying together. Watch over thy children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be, keeping them unspotted from the world. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may thy peace, which passeth understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Congratulations. Children are dismissed for Children's Chapel. Let us stand and sing our sermon hymn number 482, Come Down, O Love Divine. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Please be seated. The poem to charity composed by St. Paul in our epistle lesson is one of the most profound texts in the whole Bible. Entire books have been, re have been written seeking to plumb the depths of this marvelous work. But in my mind, I think that the most profound statement is the last, which says, and now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. Here the apostle lists what the great theologians in the history of the church have called the theological virtues. As one commentator notes, all three are great, but one of them is the greatest, charity. So today I want to explore why charity is the greatest of all virtues. Now at the outset, it should be noted that in the older English versions, the word charity has been chosen to translate the Greek word agape. In the Greek language, there were actually four different words to express the concept of love, various kinds of love. In modern translations of the Bible, the word love is typically used in all instances. When the Bible was translated into Latin, the word caritas, from which the word charity is derived, became the expression for 
Christian love. And the association was so strong that the word was basically transliterated into English. This Christian love comes from God in his, and is expressed as self-giving. Today, the word charity is used almost exclusively for giving to others who are in need. But historically, this was just an expression of agape, Christian love. Now, with this background in mind, why is charity greater than faith and hope? Well, let us think for a moment about the other two great virtues. The Bible itself gives us an apt definition of faith. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So says the author to the epistle of the Hebrews. You may recall that the apostle Thomas, who missed the first appearance of the risen Lord to the apostles, said that he would not believe unless he could touch the scars on Christ's body. When Jesus later appeared, he told him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. We would count ourselves among those who have not seen the Son of God and yet believe that he is the Savior of the world. This is the essence of faith, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Furthermore, we who are followers of Jesus Christ live here and now by faith. The St. Paul writes elsewhere, for we walk by faith, not sight. We're also told that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Truly faith is a great virtue and a gift from God. But faith is only concerned with this life. This is because there is a time coming when we will no longer walk by faith. We will walk by sight in the life of the world to come. There's a day coming when we shall see our Lord in all of his glory. Our faith will be realized and faith will be needed no longer. So much for faith. How about hope? While faith is concerned with the present, hope is concerned with the future. While we walk currently by faith, we look into the future with hope. And our hope is squarely centered upon the promise of our Lord Jesus that he will return to this earth to make all things new. St. Paul writes on the subject, for we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. We have believed on Jesus Christ and he has promised to us eternal life, but we have not yet received that final inheritance. For this, we must wait in hope, trusting in his promise. Now it is here that we need to make sure that we do not conflate the ideas of hope and wish. We do that sometimes, right? I hope it doesn't rain today. To wish something is to look forward with a certain amount of uncertainty. But to hope is to embrace sure promises of God. It is this notion that leads the psalmist to teach us to basically speak to our own souls, reminding us to hope in God. Listen to where he writes, why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him, the help of my countenance and my God. Once again, hope is a great virtue. It can sustain us through some very dark times in our lives. But like faith, it falls short of charity because a time is coming when hope will no longer be needed. You see, when Jesus Christ comes again to make all things new, we will no longer need hope. 
our hope will be realized. We will receive all that we have hoped for. It's right here that we get to the heart of what charity is the greatest of all virtues. Now, many reasons have been given for the greatness of charity or love. I would like to note three culminating in what the apostle is ultimately teaching us here in our text. First, love or charity is the greatest virtue because it expresses the character of God. God is love, St. John tells us in his first epistle. But not only does the Bible tell us that God is love, it shows us how the triune God has loved us. St. John tells us of the love of the Father. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Furthermore, the Son of God demonstrated his love for us on the cross. St. Paul says, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And Jesus himself said, greater love hath no man than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. And the Holy Spirit is not left out in this reflection of God's love. Our collect for the day echoes these words from St. Paul. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. And that's why we just sang, come down, O love divine. God is love. And the evidence of his love has, uh, in his love for us is the salvation that has been showered upon us. The second reason why love is the greatest of all virtues is that it is foundational for all of God's commandments. Jesus teaches us that when he is asked uh, what the great commandment is, he responds saying, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. You shall love your neighbors yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Later, on the night before he goes to the cross, Jesus would say, a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another. Love is the sum and substance of all of God's commandments. But the ultimate reason why charity or love is the greatest of all virtues is woven throughout the chapter before us. Love is the only one of these virtues that is eternal. That is, when your faith and hope are realized, you will still love. In the eternal kingdom, faith will be replaced by sight, and hope will receive its desire, but love will endure. For all eternity, we will love God, and we will love one another. This will never end. So during this upcoming Lenten season, and really throughout the course of our lives, let us pursue and express charity above all else. In this, we will be prepared for our eternal home with the God of love. Amen. And now let us remember the words of our Lord Jesus, how he said it is more blessed to give than to receive.
Our service continues on page 74 of your prayer books. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to give us grace so to follow their good examples that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw new with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God, devoutly kneeling. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, Judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life to the honor and glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who with great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all who truly turn unto him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul saith. This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying...
All glory be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we thy humble servants do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body, and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain a remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Ghost all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Now as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body and our souls washed through his most precious blood and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen.
Now for those joining us by live stream this morning and unable to receive Holy Communion, a prayer of spiritual communion. In union, O Lord, with the faithful at every altar of thy church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer thee praise and thanksgiving. I present to thee my soul and body with the earnest wish that I may always be united to thee. And since I cannot now receive thee sacramentally, I beseech thee to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to thee and embrace thee with all the affections of my soul. Let nothing ever separate thee from me. May I live and die in thy love. Amen. We continue on page 83 of your prayer books. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost vouchsafe to feed us who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom by the merits of his most precious death and passion. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. The peace of God which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.